Do you want to run faster? I think anybody watching this video is answering that. Absolutely yes. But for many people, you come up with the question of how the heck do I get faster with my running? For many of us, when we first start out running, running itself is a skill. We're trying to adapt. We're running slow. We're trying to do zone two training. And we're like, well, when the heck do I actually get to get faster at this thing? So today I'm going to walk you through my personal process that I take with the list method in our current clients and my own fitness for implementing speed and getting faster as part of your running training. Now, if you're an absolute beginner watching this, you'll want to make sure that you watch my beginner tips in running video first, because some of that application will be a little bit more relevant for you. If you're just starting out running and adding that to your training program, you're probably not going to jump into speed workouts or fast efforts right off the bat. You're going to want to start practicing the skill of running and gradually adding more running into your training program, thinking about building your base, volume, and then intensity, which I talk about in more detail in that video. For those of you watching this that do have somewhat of an established running history and or you've been running somewhat more routinely and you want to set a PR goal, maybe a 5K, 10K half marathon, or just get kind of faster across the board, the advice and application I'm going to give you today is more applicable to you. So first, when it comes to adding in speed work or getting faster, I think a lot of people jump right to the high quality, high volume, high intensity workout sets, speed work, tempo work, all those types of days of training, and skip the really easy stuff that are ways to what I like to think of microdosing your speed work in your training program. For people who are beginners who have somewhat of a consistent running training program and or are trying to build up their volume to a new race training goal, running more mileage than they have before, you might not want to just jump into a lot of high intensity speed work, but what you can start with is something that are called striders. Now striders are beneficial to everyone from the beginner to the intermediate to the advanced trainee, and this is a great way of adding in little bits of speed work and turnover on your legs every single week as part of your running training program. Striders are basically 80 to 95% all effort running efforts. They're not a sprint, but you kind of gradually increase your pace and intensity, hit your peak and come back down. And you're doing them for about 20 to 30 seconds, maybe four to six rounds after an otherwise easy runner day. You simply are adding in these little pickups, turnovers, or striders that allow you to work on your leg turnover, your running speed, and or practicing running at higher speeds and intensities in a low volume way that is easy to recover from. You can add this in after easy runs, one, two, or three days per week, but I love adding this in for people who are otherwise doing mostly easy training, zone two training, or building up their base or volume as a way to get in little tiny bits of that speed work and practicing that, and that can translate to your training. Well, getting faster itself is a physiological adaptation. It's also a neuromuscular adaptation. Running faster is a skill, so you need to practice running faster to get better at running faster. This is why if we only run slow or easy all the time, even if we have the phys fitness to run faster, if you're not practicing that, you can't do that. But we wanna be careful about adding too much intensity and volume at the same period in time. So this is a great way to add in little bits of that before we're ready to move into more formal speed work. The next thing that I really love when working on getting faster is things similar to striders, but implementing that within the middle of our otherwise easy runs or things known as pickups. So picking a day per week where you're doing one, two, maybe three minutes of a pickup pace or intensity, kind of more fartlek style and fartleks are essentially terminology for speed play, where you're alternating between easy, faster, or moderate pace running and kind of going through the spectrum of going in and out of these. And there's no formal structure, you're just playing with speed. And you can think of pickups in that similar kind of way or nature, where you're going out on an otherwise easy run, and maybe every minute, every one minute, every three minutes, you're picking up your pace or effort a little bit, taking it from maybe a four to five to a five to six or six to seven out of 10 effort, and then going back to your easy run and paces. You can think of that as similar to the striders, where you're just mixing these in to your running training session and adding these in as a way to practice doing a little bit of speed in the middle of a more formal run and train. I love these for off season base building or people do the speed work as a way to gradually expose yourself to faster and easier pacers without the intensity and the volume of formal speed workouts and training that allow you can simply practice running faster and implementing that into the volume of longer, easier runs. For these, you might be looking at something like four to six rounds or maybe 10 rounds of something like one minute on, one minute off, and or one minute on, two minutes easy, one minute on, three minutes easy. It will depend on your own personal recovery or the goals of that training session, but simply implementing in shorter durations, again, maybe one to three minutes with one to three minutes of rest and maybe four to 10 rounds, depending on how long each of those intervals are and how long your total training session is. Obviously, someone who's only running three miles might only sprinkle in a few of these versus someone who's running seven miles. Next, we can then graduate into are more formal speed work quality sessions and our high intensity running training sessions. 
One of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is thinking that you need a speed workout day, a tempo workout day, and a long run day, and that is the ideal week of training. The reality is you wanna probably have one quality session per week and the rest of your runs be easier. A lot of people toss around the 80-20 rule of having 80% of your runs be easy and 20% of them, percent of them be hard, or 20% of your total minutes of time each week being hard, but that is a little bit more flexible and arbitrary and really will range from maybe 10% to 30% of your total weekly efforts being more more high intensity. This will be dictated by your overall fitness status or how much training volume you're actually doing. People who are doing a very large training volume, their high intensity work may be a lower percent of their overall weekly training, or they, people with a higher fitness status might have more of the capacity to handle more high intensity closer to that 20 to 30% each week. Similarly, those who are doing less total running or days per week, you might be closer to that 30% even if you're only doing one day a week of training. So again, it depends on how many days a week you're training, how many hours or minutes you're running per week, and your fitness status on how much you're going to do. For most of the people watching this video here, I love again having that good base of implementation of your striders two, maybe three days per week after your easy runs, and then working your way up towards doing one of these quality sessions, speed workouts, or intensity days per week. So having one day per week where you are doing something like specific intervals to the goal or brace that you're doing. So maybe you're doing 5K or 10K specific workouts. You're working on long tempo intervals. Maybe you're doing specific paces for preparation for your half or full marathon and training in ways that are intentionally working above your lactate threshold or your threshold paces or efforts so that you are intentionally improving your body's ability to clear lactate and or maintain high intensity speeds and efforts and eventually being able to string them together for long durations of time. So there's gonna be different ways of programming these. Maybe you have specific interval-based paces where you're doing 200s or 400s, really short, all-out, fast efforts, or longer efforts like 800 meters to a mile at a time, depending on the goal of the race you have or your own personal discrepancies in your speed or your fitness. You might also have things known as tempo days where you're running at a tempo level effort or a sustained high hard intensity effort that is basically the fastest running pace that you can sustain with having, without having to fatigue or slow down and doing those for a specific period of time, maybe five, 10, 15, up to 20 minutes or longer in order to practice running at more sustained speeds or specific speeds that you're aiming for in your races or training. Your training program will likely have a variety of different speed workouts and intensity across a training cycle in preparation for the specific race that you have. But if you don't have a specific race and you're just trying to get faster, these workouts themselves can also cater to specific discrepancies that you may have in your personal fitness and training. So somebody who potentially has been training for marathons for a long period of time and is decent at running those really long duration paces, but really burns out or struggles with their five or 10K efforts might spend an off season specifically working on getting faster in those goals or someone like me, who is a massive aerobic base from running uh, trail and ultra marathons, can go and run all day at high volumes, but I do lack a lot of that short speed and turnover, might spend a period of time specifically training in those thresholds and intensities that I tend to lack in and have a hard time sustaining. Now, for those of you who become more intermediate plus to advance, you might start sprinkling in a specific speed workout workout per day, and then maybe some race paced efforts or higher quality efforts, thresholds, tempos, and or pyramidal type workouts built into maybe your long run when you're training things for like a half marathon, a marathon or further. And you might have that appear multiple days per week. The goal of course is to have the fitness status and the training volume to accommodate both of those things. They might take place only in a short period of time in a training cycle where you're specifically peaking and prepping and racing for a training cycle and or you are someone with goals specific enough and the volume to handle that much intensity with volume simultaneously within your training program. Most of us mere mortals here, people watching this video, are likely going to see a lot of progress with simply adding in one quality day per week and or sprinkling in those smaller doses of striders across your easier weeks. And last but not least, one of the most important things that it takes to get faster at training is going to be volume. Yes, you can do all the fancy speed workouts, you can do all the specific speed days, the quality sessions, the striders, all of that stuff. But when it comes to running fitness, to some degree, there's going to be limitations. Volume is sometimes king. Sometimes just the minutes and hours per week you're running itself is allowing you to make the physiological adaptations you need to simply have the fitness to get faster. For a lot of people, for a lot of people trying to look faster with running and training, they think, well, I'll just start making more and more of my training sessions high intense. But sometimes in order to gain more fitness to become better at running, we need to do more volume. And we need to do more volume often the easy stuff within the contrast of the higher quality workouts and training sessions. Physiological adaptations to endurance training can take a really long time. And one of the major and biggest drivers of that is going to be our overall volume. So how many minutes, days, or hours per week are you running and training? 
Now, I'm not saying everyone here is never going to get faster or better if they aren't running 100 mile weeks. Absolutely, that isn't true. Volume is dependent on the person, the time you have, your own personal response to training. But there's going to be a big difference, maybe necessarily being a 10 mile per week runner versus a 20 or 30 mile per week runner when it comes to specifically improving your overall aerobic fitness for your speed training goals. It's not just running fast that makes you faster. And on that note, we have the tried and true, you need to run slow to get faster advice that people tend to hate. Now, of course, the running slow, the easy, the zone two training runs themselves aren't necessarily making you faster in the sense of you're practicing that speed and developing that specific physiology to be able to sustain, sustain those higher intensities and or paces and efforts, but it allows you to accumulate enough volume that isn't as fatiguing to develop the underlying aerobic fitness and aerobic adaptations you need that then allow you to refine that within your speed work and training sessions in the gym. One of the biggest mistakes many runners make is running this easy stuff a little bit too hard so it's overall too fatiguing. So you're doing a lot of moderate intensity workouts each week and then you're one high intensity day. And sometimes what this can do if you're running this a little bit too hard or too fast is steal away from that intensity and output that you can do on your higher quality days. So you're more likely better off making your easier stuff a little bit easy and having the recovery and the ability to make that hard stuff specifically hard and at a higher intensity and pace. Now you might be thinking, well that's a lot of stuff Alyssa, what the heck and where do I start? So let me kind of recap for you to apply this specifically to you to where you're at with your training. I really like the idea of first starting with some striders, one up to two or three days per week after an easier run or training. Four to six rounds of 20 to 30 seconds, adding in after easy zone two or lower effort runs. Then from there, mixing it in, adding in a little bit more speed play, fartlek styles, or pickup style of training. We were simply just picking up or throwing in some random faster intervals into an otherwise easy run. Maybe one, two, or three minutes separated by one, two, or three minutes for maybe four to eight, maybe up to 10 rounds if you're doing something like one minute on, one minute off, to just practice oscillating between higher intensity stuff, but then running in between that. It's not specifically all out speed workout, but it's just recoverable, fun shifting of your paces between easy, moderate, or maybe hard throughout the course of a run and playing with that adjustment in your speed. Then from there, you can add in more formal interval or speed work type training. One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make is they start adding in volume and intensity all at once. And I really wanna recommend that when you are going to add in more intensity or speed workout trainings to your sessions, you either ease in with this model that I'm giving you, or you wait until you're at a more sustained or recoverable or adapted volume of training, so weekly mileage, and then add in that intensity or potentially pulling back your weekly mileage when you do start adding that intensity so it's not overloading your body with too much, too fast, too soon. One of the things runners tend to do is they tend to rack on their volume or their intensity all at once, and then they go, well, why did I get injured? And sometimes we need to make sure we pull back when adding one or two or most of those things at the same time and either to, in order to move forward. So then from there, you can move into usually recommending one day per week of specific quality sessions, speed workouts, or specific race preparation workouts in order to get you faster for the goal that you have at hand. These workouts are typically going to be training you for a specific goal that you have or you're training for. And last but not least, making sure that you are running slow and running enough volume to allow you to actually get to the goals you want. Of course, running slow itself is not the only thing that's gonna make you faster. You do need to practice running fast. I think a lot of people, when they hear this, they get frustrated because they said I did zone two and it made me slow or I did easy training and it made me slow and it's not the easy training itself that is the issue it's the easy training with the lack of faster higher paced efforts so you want to make sure that you are mixing in a lot of that easy training work and or building up a lot of volume there because that will help move the needle forward on your physical fitness and again it doesn't mean that everyone needs to be doing 100 mile weeks that just might mean if you're only running 10 miles a week and you're not seeing progress you might need to build up to something like 20 or 30 miles a week to really start to see a lot of those physiological adaptations but you want to make sure you're running that easy stuff easy enough that you have the physiological capacity and recoverability to do those hard training sessions as hard as they actually need to be to move that needle forward on your fitness whether that's moderate or high intensity keeping the quality to where it's supposed to be quality and making the rest easy and recoverable and there you have it my friends how to get faster in your running and my way of implementing that in as a coach and training with my personal running clients in the list method now if you don't know how to program specific speed workouts or make this progress yourself our training system and programs will allow you to work through from being a beginner, building volume and or intensity in this very specific way of implementing striders, pickups and or specific speed workouts that are unique to the training goals that you have. And we can personally help you do that and work that across time and or figure out what you need to work on in your off seasons for things that you're struggling with fitness wise. If you're interested in learning more about our programs, you can learn more below for the link.
link to thelistmethod.com and or you can take our quiz for finding the right and perfect training program for you. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for being here.